Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So, we are right at the middle of December, and that means that I am, like, officially calling it in terms of books that will be included in my end of the year wrap up because I get excited and I like to do my end of the year wrap ups at the end of December, which I know is not actually the end of the year yet. So I pick December 15th as my end of year cutoff and uh, and I kind of go from there. So we're, we're right, we're right at that time. There's a chance I might read something that would be amazing and I'd want to include, in which case I will just roll that over into 2019. So like gird your loins folks, because I am about to get all listically up in your grill. So like brace yourself, it's coming. And this is my first one. So I am creating a tag. I've never done this before. We'll see how this goes. I feel a little weird about it, but I'm creating my best and worst of the year series tag, whatever I end up calling this, look in the title. And basically this is just like 15 questions, uh, kind of about the book series that folks have read this year. And I was going through my list of like everything that I read and I realized that I had done a lot of reading in series this year. And it made me just sort of think about how I wanted to kind of slice and dice and call out specific books that are a part of a series. And so maybe they do or don't end up in best of the year lists uh, and in kind of other forms, but I specifically wanted to think about them in terms of how they related to a series as a whole. So I have 15 questions and I'll try to keep things moving pretty quick here, uh, but kind of just wanted to get into some of the highlights and lowlights because oh were there lowlights of my series reading this year. Question one is what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? And what I mean by that is it's a series that is ongoing, it's not done, but you are now caught up with it to where it is currently released. So my favorite this year was the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire, the first one being Every Heart a Doorway. Not a unique opinion, but I am now caught up through the first three books, and then we have a fourth one coming out in January. Really enjoyed catching up with this. These are great short novels, fantasy, like portal fantasy kind of books. Um, yeah, so really enjoyed catching up with that this year. The second question is, what is the best work in progress series that you are still catching up with? So a series that is still being published and you have not actually caught up fully to it yet. And I have two answers for this. So the first one is the In Death series by J.D. Robb. I was trying to catch up with it last year, still trying to catch up with it this year. There's like, I think 45-ish books that have been published in that series so far, and I'm around book 20. But I'm really enjoying slowly catching up with it. It's a great commercial fiction series that is mur like police procedural murder mysteries, like crime of the week kind of thing, set in a near future New York City that has like advanced technology and and it's just it's kind of like speculative fiction but with procedurals. So great, a great example of commercial fiction series I think is really well written and, and really well done. So that one and then uh, a shorter series that I'm still catching up with is the Book of the Ancestor series by Mark Lawrence. The first one, Red Sister, was one of my favorite first books that I, you know, read this year in a series. And uh, I'm really excited to get caught up with this um, because the next book is coming out, I believe, in April. And I think there's also a novella coming out next year. So got the next book and um, haven't finished it yet, but excited to catch up with that series. Number three is what was your favorite first book in a series this year? So mine was Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. I know some people had some problems with pacing in this, which I can totally see. I tend to be pretty forgiving of that in a first book. I get less patient with it in a second book and oh, will we get there. But I think that this shows a tremendous amount of promise. I think that thematically, this is fantastic for YA audiences. This is essentially a book about respectability politics that is set in an alternative history, civil, like reconstruction era US with zombies and our protagonist is a zombie slayer. So I thought that this was really well written and thematically super interesting. I'm really excited about where the plot is going. So this is definitely my favorite first book in a series this year. Number four is your favorite first book in a series that you think should just be a standalone. So I had two examples of that this year. So I wanted to kind of call out books that you know they're supposed to be a series, but you actually are like, I'm kind of cool with where we left this first book. I don't know if I want to keep going in it. Number one for me, and that is The Hazel Wood. I actually really love this book. I know it was divisive among audiences. And I think that this probably should not have been marketed as YA, which I think is kind of part of the problem um, in terms of why people are very divided about it. But I actually really love where this ended. It kind of ends 
very bleakly and I thought that made it a better book and when I realized it was the first in a series I was a little disappointed to be honest because I kind of liked how hardcore this ending would be as a standalone and then a kind of this Hazelwood was definitely my favorite runner-up would be The Queen's Rising which I enjoy quite a bit as a standalone I'm not sure that I'll continue because all of the things I was interested in got wrapped up in this book so I don't really know that I need to continue in it but as a standalone I like this as YA fantasy I don't know how I would really feel about this as a series so two examples of things I think should just be standalones they shouldn't be series okay so we're we're entering a I sprinkled in a few kind of least favorite slash controversial questions in here so here's here's one of them um what is your most overhyped series of the year Shades of London, un unquestionably. Now, full disclosure, at the time of filming, I have not finished the third book. That being said, the first two books were so filled with fillers. And I feel like I was told consistently, oh, every book in that series gets better and better. There's a few dissenting voices, but in general, that seemed to be the consensus. I think the second book was genuinely like one of the worst second books in a series I've read, which was very infuriating considering how much I liked all of the individual elements in that book. But like as a book, it did not work. As a second book in a series, it didn't work. This first book I enjoyed. I think I ended up giving it a four star. It was kind of a three and a half to four star book for me. It, but it also had a ton of setup and a ton of f filler. But I'm more patient with that in a first book. It doesn't, I give, I give people a lot of runway to get the story going, but like by gum, once it's going, you need to like get, get to getting. And so I think that this is an incredibly overhyped series. Essentially, I think it's overhyped because the writing is really good. Like V.E. Schwab is a very good writer in terms of the actual like prose is really good. The world is very interesting and the characters are interesting. But on a story plot level, this series has some serious issues with it. And I wish people would talk about it more because I think she's a good enough author and probably has grown from this series enough that we should expect more from her. And um, I just think that this is overhyped. I don't think it's as good as people say. Controversial, but that is my opinion. Another controversial one uh, is what is a series that you DNF this year? in terms of you read the a, a couple of books maybe just the first one maybe a couple and then you were like I'm not finishing this series because I'm not into this for me the biggest one on that was The Passage I did that as a buddy read with Dane at Dane Reads and then Lisbeth and all three of us were like not sure why this is such a hype series um, it's essentially a literary vampire post-apocalyptic trilogy it was like the first book I think was like a smooth six or 700 pages. Like it was a, it was a tome. It was a real big book and it easily could have been a 300 page book. It was just poorly edited. I mean, there were parts of it I liked. I think I ended up giving it a 2.5 star, but like I am certainly not continuing in, in that series because the first book was just so bloated and did not merit the I don't I don't understand how this is such a hyped series maybe that also could have been in there but yeah for me in terms of like DNFing a series hardcore DNFing the passage by Justin Cronin I just think it's really overhyped I know a lot of people love it and that's great for me I was just like I'm not I'm not putting myself through two more books like this moving back into a little bit more positive territory uh the next question is what was your favorite series finale of the year and I I picked two because it's two of my all-time favorite series that I finished um the first one was Magic Triumphs by Alona Andrews this is the 10th and final book in the main uh Kate Daniels series in her Kate Daniels verse there's some side Spin, spun off side series that we will get to but I just thought that this was a really satisfying ending it was not perfect I think I have a review of it up somewhere there I had some problems with this but I think in terms of ways that this could have gone wrong there were a lot of them and I think the biggest failing of this book was kind of being somewhat predictable but like only insofar as the ending actually made sense and was something you could kind of at least at a high level guess what was going to happen but like the character stuff in this was great like I just this was a really satisfying finale and uh, I'm really excited for the series to kind of have its spinoffs and continue um, with other characters so that was really good and then not a new release this year obviously but I did finally finish the Poirot series by Agatha Christie this year as a part of my project Poirot and Curtain which is I this is the first book in the series but Curtain is the final book in the series I don't have it physically but it was I loved it I was really skeptical because I'd heard it, it's divisive people some people really don't like that as the final book in the Poirot oeuvre um I found it really satisfying really moving and just 
a really nice place to leave those characters. Really enjoyed my time reading that. So kind of an old series finale and a new series finale I thought was appropriate. Okay, number eight is what was the biggest cliffhanger you had in a series this year? And I'm gonna go with Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. So I actually think as a first book in a series, there's some real problems with this in terms of pacing. I think ultimately I'm going to end up saying that I think that what is planned to be a trilogy probably should have been a duology just because there is a lot of filler in this book. That said, the ending though, like I'm so excited to see where this is going next and like things are finally like picking up and really getting to getting. And because it's a first book, I have more patience for that. Um, and because it wasn't like oppressively long, I had some patience for the filler stuff in here and the fact that it did end on a cliffhanger didn't make me as mad as it did in other circumstances. But I thought this was actually a, a really well-timed cliffhanger. There's enough suspense that you want to find out what's going to happen next, but you don't feel like they literally, like it didn't feel like the author just stopped writing in the middle of a chapter. So I thought this was a well-executed cliffhanger that makes me very excited for the next book, which I believe comes out in January and it's called, I think, The Vanishing Stair. So excited for that. And this was my favorite cliffhanger. Number nine is what is your favorite uh, spinoff from a series that you read this year? And I know that that's not applicable to everyone's reading tastes or reading genres, because I think um, in certain genres, it's more common to have spinoff type series. But um, for me, the one I had in mind when I came up with this was that I absolutely adored the first book in the Iron Covenant series, which is a spinoff of the Kate Daniel series, which I was talking about earlier. This is Hugh's story, who is a main villain in the Kate Daniels verse. So it's fun to get um, kind of a side story a trilogy. There's going to be a trilogy with one of the main villains and kind of seeing his growth and change um, and sort of a lot of what's going on with him. I thought it was a super, super good first book and a really um, elegantly handled spinoff because that is definitely a skill set that not everyone has. And I just thought Alona Andrews did a great job with that. That team can do no wrong in my eyes, so not a surprise. But yeah, that was my favorite kind of spinoff series this year. And then number 10 is what is your most anticipated next book for a series that you were reading this year that comes out next year? And for me, I'm going to say Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. And that is because I had some real plot issues with Wind Witch, which was the second big book in that series. However, after reading Sight Witch, which is a prequel novella, I would, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I really think that people should just start with Sight Witch because I think it makes both what happens in Truth Witch and Wind Witch make a lot more sense. But after I read that prequel novella and like really saw some of the pieces coming together, I was like, I cannot wait for Blood Witch. A lot of Wind Witch is setting up things that I think are going to happen in Blood Witch. So in terms of just like, this is, I think, going to be like a lot of payoff for me. So I'm really excited for this book. Blood Witch is definitely the one I'm looking forward to most next year. Number 11 is what is your most anticipated catch up series for next year? So what I mean by that is, did you start a series that is in progress and like you have a like you have some books to go to catch up with it, but you're looking forward to, to kind of reading through the series. And for me, that was the Tracer series by Laura Griffin. It is what I would call cozy romantic suspense. So there's definitely each book focuses on a couple that's getting together, but they are working in like a crime lab. So there's also sort of like a mystery of the week element happening. So it was really light, but still engaging and kind of just good. Like I, I would think of this as really good, like travel reads or just when you need some, you know, kind of a palate cleanse. Um, so I read a couple of those and really enjoyed them. So I'm looking forward. I think there's like 13 existing in the series. So I have like 10 ish to catch up with. So I think that would be great sort of in between reading and it's it seems to be pretty episodic. So you don't have to read it strictly in order. Number 12 is your favorite series you just finished period this year that you finally finally uh, polished off. And for me, I'm going to go with the Poirot books for that. I mean, Agatha Christie is my favorite author and like to finally have read all of the Poirot novels. Yeah, like I'm definitely glad I finished it. Like I said, I really liked the final book in that series. But yeah, this is definitely my favorite series overall that I finished this year. Number 13 is your favorite episodic series you started or finished this year. And what I mean by that is a lot of times when we talk about series, we are talking about things that are sequential. So like each book is really building on the next. Most of the ones I've talked about are kind of that way. Um, but episodic series are more kind of like a Poirot book or like a lot of mysteries are this way or a lot of romance ones are this way where it's really like they can be read as standalones, but they're interconnected. So that's what I mean by an episodic series. And for me, I really enjoyed discovering Penny Reed this year. She writes contemporary romance that are very much in sort of a romantic comedy tradition. So think more like closer to the end of Chiclet. I don't like that term, but closer to that 
that end than like straight up romance. There's a lot of like friendship stuff happening and like work things, whatever. Um, so she has two series that are interconnected, but are pretty episodic. And one of them is the Knitting in the City series that I started, um, which I think is her best known one. The first one is Neanderthal Seeks Human. And then there's a spinoff series, which is the uh, Beard series. So I read the first one of those um, and enjoyed that. So anyway, Penny reads a new author to me and I'm enjoying that episodic series she's got going. Number 14 is a series you finally bailed on after holding out for a long time. So this is similar to sort of that DNF question earlier, but really like this is for one that you kept waiting to get better and you finally are like, I just can't anymore. And for me, that is the Lindsay San Arjuno Vampire series. It had its heyday, but I think that it is past its prime and I'm finally just saying no more. Okay guys, this is the part of the video where I went back and realized like, oh, this got corrupted. I have a new, I did a new software update, plus I have a new thing I'm filming with. And these things combined means I'm losing more footage these days than I normally do. Hopefully that gets solved soon. But anyway, the 15th question that I had was series that you were most surprised that you liked this year. And I decided to go with the Ones series from Ronnie Lauren. This is a contemporary series. And the reason why it surprised me that I liked it so much is its subject matter it would have been really easy to go very wrong, especially for like commercial fiction, which is that it is following a group of people who survived a shooting at their high school prom 10 years later and like shows them like, getting together and moving on and stuff. And like I said, it would have been really easy for this to be like a hot dumpster fire and completely insensitive. But what I really liked is I think, you know, is it like the deepest, most profound reflection on life post like serious trauma? No, it's not. But I do think that it handles that subject matter with quite a bit of sensitivity. And I like that it's essentially showing them having been deeply impacted it, but it ultimately ending in kind of a hopeful way. And I think this year, I've read a lot of different books about mass shootings, both fiction and nonfiction. And I do think that it's healthy that in that discussion, and as we see books increasingly addressing this issue, which is like a huge problem in American society, and increasingly part of our cultural discourse about like what to do about about it. Not really that much of a mystery about what we should do about it, but that's a side note. I think that we're seeing it more in fiction and I think it's good and positive that we have lighter series or more commercial series that can deal with that in a way that is hopeful and not insensitive. So I just think that I, I was surprised at how well I thought that Ronnie Lauren handles that material and I've really enjoyed it. I've got the next arc that comes out. I think the next one comes out at the beginning of January. So I'm looking forward to reading that. It may be the last in the series. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I was surprised at how much I liked that one this year. So yeah, that's my best and worst series list slash tag. I will tag some people below. I'd love it if people wanted to do this, uh, maybe to give you an idea of what you can do for wrapping up things this year, but no pressure. If you don't feel like doing it, that's totally fine. But yeah, those are some of my thoughts on series that I read this year. I do, you know, I read really widely. I read everything from, you know, commercial fiction to literary fiction to non, -fi I mean, I read everything. So I do read a lot of different types of series, um, as well as reading a lot of standalones. So I, f I felt like I wanted to make sure I specifically gave some time to series just because because they are commercial fiction, sometimes they don't end up on my best of the year lists. That's just kind of the way it goes. But it doesn't mean that they aren't really entertaining and really worth kind of celebrating and talking about, even if quality wise, it's maybe not as good as some other things that I've read. So I felt like this was a good way to make sure I kind of gave some shout outs to series that I really enjoyed, even if they weren't the best of the best in terms of individual books. The series, I think oftentimes, like, are more than the sum of their individual books parts. So I just wanted to give them some love. So anyway, that will do it for this this video. Uh, if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having a really lovely day. Get ready for my epic end of the year countdowns because they are coming. And I will just talk to you guys soon. <laughs> okay, bye.